This morning in Street Stories, it's a story of heartbreak and addiction. This week's Street Stories features a man who turned his life around when he thought everything was going downhill. His life was a mortgage broker, wasn't the same. Little did he know a boxing ring was going to change his outlook on life. Walt Buteau has more. He had never boxed before, but had battled demons far worse outside the ring for about a decade. Up, up, hook, hook, roll out, roll out to the side. There we go. The heavyweight in the ring was a mortgage broker, but says he began to live a little fast as soon as he turned 21. Pop, 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 dig, hop, dig, hop. It went downhill until about two years ago hop. when he faced losing his son One, two, hook. or giving up his addiction to alcohol and opioids. Dig, dig. Right here. here we go. The addiction, the drugs, the alcohol uh, fills you with these demons that you really have a tough time to trying to fight off. They had the claws in on me, and I fought back. My lowest was probably um, a depression so low that I wanted to commit suicide. That's it. Just get your hands moving. That's all. Leon Cello is one of several fighters who are taking street fight frustrations into a refereed ring as part of Brawl for It All, created by former boxer Jared Tillinghast and Richard Capiella. Yeah, come on. Fellow fighter Dino Wamet is a Brawl for It All regular. Are the grudges real? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Not a drummed up thing, these are real grudges. No, they're real. Leon Cello's grudge involves a family member who is also using boxing to fight addiction. Separating, call it love, and appreciation and respect for what he's going through. There you go. Nice. That's set aside because at the end of the day, we're going to beat each other up and we're going to shake hands and um, go on our path and maybe help each other after that. He's taking that one step farther by introducing the sweet science to other recovering addicts. And he says he has seen it help them too. Does that feel good to see other it people feels doing good. that? It feels good, yeah. That's my recovery, is seeing what these guys are doing. I found that hitting a bag compared to drinking, uh, hitting the bottle, the healthier choice, the more uh, rational choice is to hit a bag. There will be a total of 12 grudge matches on the card on Friday the 13th. For The Road Show, I'm Walt Buteau. And we're now joined by two of the guys who are organizing Brawl for It All, Richard Capiello and Jared Tillinghast. And the event's going to actually take place tomorrow right here in Rhode Island. Thanks, guys, for being here. Yeah, thank you. Pleasure. So, so tell us a little bit more about the event because I was, I was reading it's going to be, it's also going to be a reality TV show, right? Well, we're working with a uh, company out of New Jersey that's building a pilot right now to get picked up by a, a network as mm -hmm. a reality show. So that's that's our goal. Right. It's got to be exciting for both of you guys to to get some of these folks in the ring, um, you know, who, who whose life may have not been what it what they thought it was going to be or what they sh it should have been. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty unique. We have a unique concept here. We have um, regular people. Regular Joes, right? You know, anchor man. Oh yeah, we're well, at I'm sure there's gonna be somebody from Channel Ten or Six that you have a grudge with, right? No, we're all good. We're all good. <laughs> we'll make a call out video. Yeah, we're all good. But this yeah. is really a way to get just regular folks in the ring who may never have thought about doing this before, right? That's the whole concept. It's getting people that are coming out of the comfort zone and maybe stepping in and trying to take care of a grudge that they've had in the past. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, an, it's a way of taking things away from like the street type of thing, or maybe someone that had a grudge that always like kind of want to hit their neighbor or whatever and right. get in there and sort of, <laughs> you know, fight it out and shake hands at the end. That's, right. that's the ultimate goal. Well, that's what I was reading because I was reading that no matter what the outcome of these matches, at the end, you guys have said they must shake hands no matter what happens. There's an agreement that we have before we even put the fight on or, or agree on the fight. And they have to shake hands after the fight. They have to, even if you go home and you're not friends anymore, right. we want to see something. Good sportsmanship, after, Good at sportsmanship least. after. And it's not easy because some, some of these grudges are deep and, and they're, you know the wounds are deep. But at the end of the day, we want to see them shake hands. You know, the, our last event, we had a, the kid that lost, he kind of was apprehensive about shaking his hand, but then yeah. he came back in and, and shook he, hand and, of the end. And, and did the right thing. Yeah. Now they're rematching again. <laughs> now they're rematching. Cousins. What is, what's the reaction from people who, I mean, let's just say for, you know, for fun, that I was to get in the ring never fighting before. What's the reaction from people who have never done this before? And then when they're done, they're like, oh my God, well, I we, can do this. We require them to go in with a, um, a trainer mm -hmm. into a gym, and we sort of kind of keep our eye on them. 
and make sure that they're being prepared to the best of their ability for a short-term fight. So no one's going in the fight with like no experience. Right. The requirement is to get four to six weeks with an experienced trainer and get yourself you know, prepared to the best of their ability. They're also wearing 16 ounce gloves, headgear, was sanctioned by USA Boxing, so we, liability wise, they're covered. Um, in the amateurs, if someone gets hit hot enough, they stop it. There's a lot of protection here, there right. really is. So, right. um, The event tomorrow night, tell us about it, because I know it's going to be Jason themed, right? Yeah, Friday the Friday 13th. Friday the 13th, yeah. What a better night to hold a fight, Friday the 13th. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Friday the 13th, uh, 100 Factory Street, West Warwick Civic Center. Um, we're excited. We have a lot of, uh, we have a crazy fan base that is, is super supportive. Um, <laughs> the, we've created characters out of these fighters. We have great. Uh, the ghost, you know, Gomet, um, and they go by their nicknames, you know, Godzilla. We have uh, the lion. We have the ranger. We have Nomas and uh, the hammer. So there's a lot of, uh, there'll be two main events and two featured bouts. Right. And the rest of the undercard is all grudges. And tickets are still available to, yeah, uh, to yeah, go if yeah. anybody wants to come? It's a different twist. It's sort of like a little bit of WWE in there. Like, you so know, it's, look, whatever it's something works. unique and it's working. Whatever works. Well, it's WWE meets Jerry Springer meets People's Call in a boxing ring. People love it. Guys, thanks so much for coming in. Great yeah, to thank have you. Very you. Much. Nice to thank have you. you best so of, much. Best thank of you luck. So much. Um, and if you want more information or you want to purchase tickets for Brawl for It All, visit roadshow.com.